In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss chi-square, or goodness of fit, and it really comes down to comparing expected versus observed. I'm going to look at NHL hockey players and ask, does birth month matter, and is it a predictor whether a young boy will be a professional hockey player or not? The null hypothesis I'm going to test is birth month has no impact on a child growing up to become a NHL hockey player. I'm going to do this with an alpha equal 0 0.05 and I want to be 95% confident of my results. I'm actually not going to use months, I'm going to use quarters of the year and I'll put the players in first, second, third, or fourth quarter depending on their birth month. I randomly picked 220 hockey players that played over the last 10 years or so. I divide this number by 4 because there's 4 quarters in a year. I would expect that there would be 55 players born in each quarter. So there would be 55 players born in the first quarter, the second quarter of the year, the third quarter of the year, the fourth quarter because I expect that birth month has no impact. And again, these are expected values or the number of players born in each quarter. Observed from my sample was that there were 64 in the first quarter, 67 in the second quarter, 45 in the third quarter, and 44 born in the fourth quarter of the year. Again, these are my observed values. Now if I add these up, 64 plus 67 plus 45 plus 44, this equals 220. What I observed in the first two quarters was more than what I expected. And what was observed in the last two quarters of the year was less than I expected. If I add up all these values, if I take the difference between expected and observed and add that all up, it will equal to zero. So I have to, if I want to understand the differences, I have to come up with a method, and that's what chi-square is. So I take the differences, and I square it, and I divide it by the expected. Now I'm going to walk you through this step by step with all these numbers too, so don't bail out on me yet, just hang in there. So I'm going to take all these differences, squared divided by expected, I'm going to take all those, and then I'm going to add them all up. That's sigma, and that means sum. And this is my chi-squared. Now just a little bit more about chi-squared before we start doing calculations. When my observed gets close to my expected, my chi-square approaches zero. In fact, if observed is equal to expected, they're the same, chi-square is equal to zero. Now, as the observed and expected get far apart, chi-square becomes very large. So to do this calculation, I am going to make a little table. I'll put my observed in the top row. And right below that, I'll put my expected, which is 55. So I take my observed minus my expected. And that's a difference. And that's 64 minus 55 is 9. 67 minus 55 is 12. 45 minus 55 is negative 10. 44 minus 55 is negative 11. If I add all those up, it's zero, by the way. Now, I take those differences and I square them. So 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. Negative 10 squared is 100. And negative 11 squared is 121. Now I take the differences squared and divide by expected. 
So it's 81 divided by 55, 144 divided by 55, 100 divided by 55, and 121 divided by 55. And I have 81 divided by 55 is 1.5. 144 divided by 55 is 2.6. 100 divided by 55 is 1.8. And 121 divided by 55 is 2.2. .2. Now if I add all these up, I sum them up, this is my chi-square, which is equal to 8.1. That's chi-square. I'm going to show you the formula you probably see with your professor and your senior textbooks. So they take the observed minus the expected. The O is the observed minus E, which is expected. And that's the same as the differences, which I was talking about. And now I square that. That part squared. Now I divide by E. And that's the same as that right there. And this are, they're the same thing. Then I sum it all up. And that's what that sigma means. That means sum. And this is equal to chi-square. In this case, it's equal to 8.1. Now I'm going to talk about degrees of freedom. So I look at my categories, and I have four categories. One, two, three, four, one for each quarter. And I'm looking at degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom are equal to C, which is categories minus 1. So degrees of freedom equals to 4 minus 1 or 3. And again, that C is categories. Now I have everything to determine if my hypothesis is correct or not. Remember I started out with alpha is equal to 0 0.05, which is a 95% confidence. I think it's useful to draw the uh, distribution of chi-square. It looks something like this. Now I draw in my critical value, my chi-square critical value, which I'll determine in a second. And everything to the right of that, any value greater than that is in the rejection region. And even with all these stats, there's a 0 0.05 chance I got these results just by dumb luck. Now on the back of your textbook, there's always a table. There's a lot of tables, and it looks something like this with degrees of freedom. That DF is degree of freedom down the side there. And across the top are my alpha values. And you'll see like 0 0.10 and 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 and maybe a lot more. And I'll just fill in the values that you would see in the table. And these are all critical values. Now I, I take my degrees of freedom, which is 3 in this case, and I'm on that row right there. And my alpha is 0 0.05, so my critical value is 7.81. Let me move that up and over. And now I compare that 7.81 to my calculated chi-square of 8.1, and that's larger, and that's in the red area. That's in my rejection region right there. So what do I do? So I bring in my null hypothesis again, and birth month has no impact on a boy growing up to become an NHL player, and it's rejected. And I determined that birth month matters, and also being from Canada makes a big difference too.